Good morning and welcome to Golden Harvest Cowboy Church on this Resurrection Sunday. Let's open with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time again to gather together. We thank you, Lord, how you bless us in so many ways. And we just ask you in our midst now today and let every word spoken and every song sung and everything that we do be honorable and pleasing in your sight. And we thank you for each one that's tuned in this morning, Lord, either on the radio or on the, on the YouTube. And as we just give you praise and glory and, and the ways you give us to do it, we just thank you again. And we give, may we glorify your name with our worship this morning, and may your word speak through us. And we thank you again for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. observing the Lord's Supper at the end of the message. So gather up your elements and join us as we as we do that this morning. Um, we have had some difficulties in the past on Sunday mornings getting everything to load up and go right. So we're, we're pre-recording this a little bit early so that we can have all that done ahead of time. So hopefully this will work out good for everything. Um, we thank you again for, for joining along with us as we do this this morning. Okay. things as we travel this earth shifting sand that transcends all the reason of man but the things that matter the most in this world they can never be held in our hands I believe in Called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cause. When 
to the church or to mail them in, you can uh, mail them to the web. The address is on the website at AC City Cowboy Church. The P.O. Box is there, or you can drop them by the church. Monday mornings we are here at the church from 9.30 until 12. So if you'd like to drop by those, you can do that or mail them in. Or you can wait to just save them all up and then when it's all over, bring them on. <laughs> or whatever you choose to do. So uh, we're happy to have everybody along with us. We're here to serve the Lord and to, and to glorify Him and that's why we're here. So we, we thank you for all things. I don't think we have any other announcements. So. Oh, I do have an announcement. We're going to be having a memorial service. It will be live streamed on Facebook on the 26th of April for our brother Larry Bigelow who passed away Tuesday morning. Wednesday? Um, Wednesday? Thursday. Tuesday morning. I'm pretty sure it was Tuesday. But I'm sure I'm positive it was Tuesday. I'm positive it was Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday morning, our brother Larry Bigelow passed away. Uh, we hope to be with the Lord, and so we will be having a memorial service live stream from the church on the 26th of April one at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That is a Sunday. So it will be after morning services. We will have a memorial then, uh, and again, it will be live stream on Facebook Live, not on YouTube. So uh, we'll announce that again next week. Okay, here we go. Yeah. 
Uncertainty, a lot of things that we don't know about, and as we sang before, I believe in a hill not called Mount Calvary. This world is kind of crazy, and it's always been that way, and it's not likely to change until it's all gone. Amen. So uh, we're we're just grateful and happy that we live a life today. We live now because He lives through us. The life that we live is a life of Christ. God save the Son. Call him Jesus, came to earth, he'll wait for you, he lived and died, and by my pardon, an empty grave is there for a Savior to cause he lives, I can face Cause he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Our sweet to hold, new born baby, fill the pride and joy. This child can be a certain day because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all the fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future. And life is worth the living. Because he is where we're Cross that river, fight lies fine, for the pain, and it is dead. In waiting for me, I'll see the light. 
lines of glory and I'll know he reigns because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds a future and life is worth the living just because he lives because he lives, I can face it all Because he lives, all fear is gone Because I know he holds a future And life is worth the living just because he lives Yes, life is worth the living just because he lives
had a good week and a great day, a lot of good things going on. God's doing some amazing work. It's been amazing to me how God has provided opportunities through the last three weeks to be able to be a witness to people and help people and lead people to the Lord. We've done just as much uh, with, with the way things are as, as we have with, uh, with the doors being open. So we're grateful that God blesses us and He guides us and He, uh, he brings people to us and that needs to be ministered to and allows us the opportunity to minister even though we're not gathering in the building. So it's been a great week. It's been a great time. Um, this this morning of, of this Sunday morning of Resurrection Sunday <clears throat> in the midst of Passover, it's an amazing time that we're in. But before we start, I'd like to open with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you again for today. We thank you for your blessings. 
We thank you for everything, Lord. There's not anything on this earth that we don't thank you for because everything is orchestrated by you. So we thank you that you bring us to this time and we live through this time, this amazing time that we're living in, that we see amazing things happening in the midst of what would be perceived as turmoil. Your hand and your spirit is alive and well and working very good. We thank you, Lord, that we get to see that. We get to be have our faith strengthened by the things that you do in the most adverse times. So we thank you again. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this morning as we gather together, as we remember remember your, the day that you had risen from the dead, and, and we just give you glory, and we thank you for it all. Be with us now as we open your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, one aspect of life that is sometimes difficult to understand, but it applies to almost everything in our life, is timing. Timing affects everything. When we're up here and we're all playing music together, timing is what drives it all. And if one person gets out of time or one thing gets out of time, it's difficult to keep going without stopping. You've been here when I've had to just stop the song and start over because we got out of time and you just can't, go, can't keep going. When the timing is off and the timing is wrong, things are chaotic and they're not, they're not working because timing is very, very important. And we can see that in Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11. Oh wait, 3 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. God didn't leave anything out. He said most things I'm taking care of, but he says there's a time for everything. And everything in its time is right. And everything out of its time doesn't work good. And it's amazing that when this whole this whole philosophy that, that the Lord gave me when I began to study this last week, and He, he, he led me into the uh, into the book of John. And I love reading out of the book of John, and, and and the book of John has a lot a lot of interesting stuff and a lot of amazing stuff in it. But the story about Lazarus, and I don't like to call it a story that the, the, the account of what happened in Lazarus's life. Now. Lazarus, the name Lazarus is a, a remarkable name in itself because it means God has helped, past tense, already done, already finished. The name Lazarus, by having the name, it says God has already helped him somewhere down the line. Now, Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha, were, were people that Jesus loved dearly. He knew them very well and he loved them dearly. And Jesus got word, or Lazarus got, we got very ill, and the sister sent word to Jesus where Jesus was to let him know that, that Lazarus was very, very ill. And they'd already anointed him and prayed over him and did all the things they needed to do, and they sent for Jesus. Now, the amazing thing is that when Jesus got word of it, now, if, if, if we were, if, if we were, say, we were, uh, of a mind that, that we felt like we could be beneficial to somebody who was very, very ill, and somebody comes and said, hey, you know, so-and-so is very ill, and, and they need you, they would be like, okay, I'm on my way. I'm headed that way. But let's go to the book of John, chapter 11. <clears throat> John, chapter 11. I want to begin at the, very, begin at the very beginning of the verse, verse 1, and I'll read eight or nine verses. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and, Mar and her sister Martha. It was Mary which anointed the Lord with an ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brothers Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, thou whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Oh, Lazarus is sick? Well, this sickness is not unto death, but God will be glorified in it. We'll just hang out for a couple of days. See, God, Jesus understood the importance of God's timing. 
He wasn't about to move on a maybe. He wasn't about to take off and go to, and decide to go do what he thought needed to be done until the Father told him, time for you to go. So many times things in our life come up and, and, and we feel like the Lord wants us. And I'm going to give you a perfect example of that. The radio station that we're talking on right now that we're broadcasting on and River Source down here where we've been able to minister for years. When we were here one Sunday uh, when they first opened River Source, I felt the Lord speak to me and said, you need to be ministering at that facility that they just opened. Well, y'all know how I am. I jumped in my pickup and I ran down there as fast as I could and I went knocking on the door. The Lord told me to come down here I'm supposed to minister here. But I couldn't get in. Oh no, we don't have nobody. Nobody from the outside come in. These people can't go out. There was just no way. And I come back and I pray, Lord, oh, I don't understand that. Why would you tell me I needed to be ministering there and that I can't even get in the place? Well then, a couple of years later, The people, the administrators at the River Source, they come to the church and say, we need, we need a church for our people to go to. Would you be interested? See, timing. When, when, when I felt the word of the Lord tell me that we needed to go to River, we needed to be ministering at River Source, he didn't tell me, get in your pickup and go down there and do it. He said, you need to minister there. So when the window or the door opens, I'm prepared to receive that and know that, that yep, that's your right. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. And now is the time. The other example, the radio station. I felt the Lord one day tell me, you really need to be on the radio. So what do I do? I know Chris that has 91.1 in town. I run, I call Chris up and say, what do I do to get on your radio station? He's like, well, you got to get a hold of office. And so we go through this, and it, it just didn't pan out. And I'm like, well, why would, why would the Lord tell me to be on the radio? And then I can't seem to get any communication to the radio station. And then Bill Bear comes up to me and says, I've got a low-power radio station if you'd like to be on it. Timing. It's all about God's timing. And Jesus understood this. Jesus understood, okay, Lazarus is very ill. But Jesus said, this, this death is, this illness is not unto death. This illness, I, I'm feeling, he, as soon as he was uh, uh, informed of it, he knew this is not an illness unto death, but for the glory of God. See, what God puts in our life is for his glory. The events that God lines us up to be part of is for His glory in His timing. And it's important that we recognize and understand the importance of timing. So let's go on. So Jesus finally goes and He takes off and then they go. He, he tells the disciples, we're going to go to Judea. And, and, and they tell Him, no, no, they're going to stone you over there. But He says, "He said, no, we're going to go. And so let's go on to uh, John chapter 11, 24 and 25. Listen to what Martha says when Jesus gets there. Now we know Jesus has came on his timing. Lazarus has already passed away. Lazarus is already in the grave. He's been there four days. But when, when Jesus comes up to her, Martha said unto him in verse 24 of chapter 11 of the book of John, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Okay, he's already dead. He's in the grave four days. And we know that she told Jesus, oh, he already stinks. We don't want to go down there. But I know that he's going to live again and, and when, you re when he gets resurrected in the last day. Now listen to Jesus' reply. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus understood the, port and the importance of the time. It's amazing that the name Lazarus Represents God has helped. A name that 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 identifies prophecy, and his parents named him that long before he ever knew that they was going to, he was going to need Jesus to, to help him. And the people, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. We know that he went in there and he called Lazarus, and Lazarus came out. And this was an amazing thing, and amazing things happened. And, and, and God was glorified through Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And people were so amazed about it all over that even after that, as Jesus went on and he taught, and Jesus went places to teach, people would come to see Jesus, but not only Jesus, Lazarus. They wanted to see the one guy that was dead four days in Jesus because he was traveling. Go to the John 12 and verse 9. 
much people of the jews therefore knew that he was there but they came not for jesus sake only but they might see lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead they came they wanted to see that they were marveled at it they they were they were amazed at it now we go back to where jesus has come and lazarus is there dead and Jesus is going to raise you. Jesus knows that the end result of all of this. And they're standing there and, and Mary and Martha are crying because Lazarus is passed. And Jesus was there with them and he wept. But you know, the, 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 the tears that Jesus, that Jesus had shed were different. C.S. Lewis put it this way. He wrote that we follow one who stood and wept at the grave of Lazarus. Not surely because he was grieved that Mary and Martha wept in sorrow for their lack of faith. But because death, the punishment of sin, is even more horrible in his eyes than in ours. You see, when, when Jesus recognized that Lazarus, the one he loved, was there and he was dead, he, he, he acknowledges the reason that he's dead is because of sin. It's not somebody's fault. It's not, it's not somebody else's responsibility. It's not anything other than the fact that because of sin in the world, Lazarus is dead. And that's what, that's what breaks Jesus' heart. And that still breaks his heart today. The same exact thing that happened in that day when Jesus recognized the sin had taken the life of one that he loved. That this is how prominent sin is in the people that Jesus loves. This is what broke his heart. Because in Habakkuk, Habakkuk 1 and 13, we can turn there. Habakkuk 1 and verse 13, it says, Thou art of pure eyes that than to them to behold evil, and canst not look upon iniquity. When 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 we think about this Passover time that we're in and the Resurrection Sunday and all the things that Jesus has endured over the last three days because of the sin in the world. Because there's sin and the only way to ever have any victory over sin is through Jesus. Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, the same as he keeps us from death through his blood. Just as he does for, did for Lazarus, he does for each one that, that truly in your heart believes that Jesus is the Son of God and he was crucified, horribly crucified, and hung on a tree that we could have a, a, a forgiveness of the sin in our life. The sin that is, is our nature. Regardless of how good we live, regardless of what we do in our life, regardless of, of everything, Jesus weeps at that sin that kills His people. And He provides a way out. He, he says, I've overcome death and hell and the grave. The testimony of Jesus Christ and all that He is and all that He's done in the Bible that we read today affirms to us that this day is, is, a, is a very important day. This, fa this, this, this Passover time. It's just amazing to, to me as I've, as I've been studying and I've been reading and going through these things that, that this entire coronavirus thing happened to where we're experiencing this during Passover week. Everything, go back to Ecclesiastes. The Bible is true. The Bible is real and the Bible is right. For everything under the heaven, there's an appointed time by God. During this week, this Passover, Passover week and, and Resurrection Sunday in this time, this is an appointed time by God. And this pandemic, as the world calls it, Jesus tells us, I died for all of that. I took care of all of that. I've already conquered the world. Let your heart not be troubled. 
It's because if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is really the Son of God and God raised you from the dead and you confess it with your mouth, then you become one of His, just as Lazarus was. Just as Lazarus was dead in his sins and Lazarus was dead in the ways of the world, so were we. <clears throat> but Jesus has brought us up out of that just as He did Lazarus to spend eternity with Him. To spend eternity enjoying beginning the day. Not someday down the future. The idea that He brought, brought Lazarus back he does the same thing to us. Our eternal life begins when we accept Jesus. It's not something we receive later. We receive it when we accept Jesus. We receive it when we confess that Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. Go to Romans 5. Verses 8 through 11. But God commended His love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by His blood, but we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received atonement. Atonement, by definition, is the reconciliation of God and humankind through Jesus Christ. We have received the atonement. We've already received it. It's already yours. You already have. The life that Jesus intended you to have if you confess Him as Lord and Savior and God of your life. In the book, go back to the book of John, chapter 15. At verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. Greater love there is not. Because he loves you, because he loves us, just as he loved Lazarus in God's time. Everything will be done and done in, in, in unison and in perfection. But it's up, it's up to us to remember who we are, Christ. It's just up to us to remember what He has done and what we're to do. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. If you love me, remember, oh, how I love Jesus. We just sang the song. If you love Jesus, remember the things that He commands us to do. This, this Passover week is a very important week in our life. It's a very important week for the Christians to remember what we have received and why we have received it and who gave it to us. And not just take it for granted every year that it's okay. Not just go on year after year after year and, oh, yo, I was talking to my sister this last week and I've told many, many times how this week of, of, of Palm Sunday and Passover and Resurrection Sunday, these were very. These, my mother was more concerned about her kids being home during this week than any other week of the year. This last week, I was talking to my sister on the phone, and, and she said, "I just realized that last Sunday was Palm Sunday, and Mom would have never forgot that." Well, I'm sure now that my sister will never forget it again. Because God has reminded her. And the scripture that came to my mind as she was telling me that was <clears throat> raise a child up in the way they should go and when they are old they will not depart from it. Remembering Palm Sunday that Jesus willingly got on that burrow and he rode into town to do exactly what he came here to do in God's timing that everything would work out according to God's purpose. And that's what we're experiencing today is that everything working according to God's purpose in our world today, the things that are happening. Thank God. Thank God that we're, that we're able to, to do what we're doing today through the radio and through YouTube and what we're going to be able to keep on, keep on doing and reaching people <clears throat> and ministering to people that otherwise we would never get to reach and minister to. God has opened doors and opened windows and done things that, that, that we didn't do before. 
And it's amazing as he did it in this Passover time. In a time when he reminds us that I came and I died for all sinners. I died for everyone on the face of the earth. And this Passover week is a time for us to remember that he protects us and he guides us. As the, but we, we have to be the ministers we're supposed to be. The church is the people out there today sharing the gospel with whoever God puts in your life. In the last three weeks, God has put somebody in my life every week that needed some kind of help or needed some kind of ministry or needed some kind of preaching. And I led a man to the Lord yesterday right here on this altar. God has not stopped doing his work. God has only made it bigger. And it will be better. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 9. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto the lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that will fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you would greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more than precious than the gold that perisheth, might be found under the praise and the honor and the glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom ye have not seen, ye love, and whom till now ye see him not, ye believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory, <laughs> receiving to the end of the faith, even to the salvation of your souls. Rejoice, church. Rejoice. We have an inheritance. We have eternal life. We have everything in God's time. We're experiencing grace and mercy in a way that the world hasn't experienced in a long time. Rejoice in the fact that we have. Rejoice in the fact that we are in the midst of Passover week. Go to, go to um, Exodus chapter 12. This week is your <clears throat> going through the week. Be reminded that this is Passover week, that, that this is what this is Resurrection Sunday. And remember it in a way that we're commanded to remember it in Exodus 12, verses 12 and 14. For I, the Lord says, I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and when against all gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood that shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now this is the point right here. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout all your generations. Ye shall keep the feast and ordinance forever. An ordinance forever. Remembering this Passover time. When he came and, and through the, the things that happened in Egypt, he, he, he protected all of his people. Put the blood post on your house. Stay in your house and I'll protect you. And I will pass over you and I will protect you and he will protect us through this time. But we need to remember the protection that we get through the blood of Jesus Christ. We're going to worship with our, with, uh, with our communion right now. Uh, Lord, if you'll pass that out. If you have your elements for communion, you can take those out. I don't need to put that away yet. If you have your elements for communion, please get those out now. And uh, I want to read from the book of John. John chapter 6. First of all, in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 28, it tells us that a man ought to examine himself. 
that there not be anything separating you from God at this time as we partake of the body and blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. So take a moment right now in your own place, wherever you are, quietly sit. Ask God to reveal anything in your life that may need to confess at this point. That you can receive all that He has for you through this body and the blood. So take this moment now. As quietly as you do so. John chapter 6 beginning at verse 51 the words of Jesus I am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that I will give is my flesh and I will give it for the life of the world the Jews therefore strove among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Just as he rose up Lazarus, he raises us up to his body and his blood. And beginning in verse... 23 of the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Paul writes, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And he broke it. And he gave thanks. Father, we thank you this morning for this precious bread, for this precious body of your Son, the Son of God Almighty, committed his love toward us that he died on the cross and his flesh was torn from his body we received that this morning Lord through the, the forgiveness to the, the new covenant this, this, this body of your son represented in this bread we thank you for it we give you glory he prayed and he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me in remembrance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we take the bread After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, Lord, we thank you for the shed blood. Throughout time, Lord, you have protected us through the blood of the perfect lamb. And you are the perfect lamb. And we put our faith in you and the faith in this blood and this body, Lord, that you will raise us up in the last day. So we thank you for the shed blood, Lord. We thank you. We give you glory for all that you do with it and all you do through it. And how it cleanses us of sin and raises us up. We thank you, Lord Jesus. It's up saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of our Lord and Savior, we take the cup. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God the Father Almighty who has provided such a way for us to experience him and watch the timing of the things that he does in the world to reveal his sovereignty and his glory and his power and his might. We've got a couple more songs we're close with. Y'all come up.
ok Why? 
says is the only time it's ever too late is once you pass in this life without Jesus. There's room at the cross for you. This morning if you're joining us either on YouTube or on the radio we invite you to pray a prayer alongside. That this morning you would Acknowledge Jesus Christ and acknowledge what He accomplished for you on your behalf this day as He had been risen from the dead. That you could be risen from a life of sin to life eternal with Jesus Christ. So, if you feel the Spirit yearning you to pray and to reach out to Jesus and receive what he did at the cross for you. You can do that this morning by simply following along in this prayer. Lord Jesus, while I am still a sinner, you still love me. Lord Jesus, while everything in my life is a shambles and not perfect, or while everything in my life is still perfect, I'm still yet a sinner. And Lord, I want to confess you as my Savior this morning. So, come and live on the inside of me. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God the Father. He was crucified and buried and rose three days later and shed his blood and his broken body created a new covenant between God and mankind. And I receive what you did on the cross. Let me receive the atonement that you set in place that I could be reconciled unto God. As you gave your life for me, I give my life to you this morning. 
and I put my faith and trust in all your promise. For it is in Jesus' name that I ask these things. Amen. 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 God bless you each and every one. We love you very much. And as we can go through this time and endure this time, be joyful. Be joyful. God bless. Have a great day.